Today in the Daily Dose, the Opelousas Massacre. During the peak years of post-Civil War Reconstruction, in 1868, the Republican-majority Louisiana State Legislature ratified a new constitution, coattailing the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution by granting citizenship rights to recently emancipated African Americans. Leading white carpetbaggers like 18-year-old Ohio teacher Emerson Bentley to help blacks in Opelousas, Louisiana, achieve economic, political, and educational parity with whites. Unwilling to cede power to newly freed African Americans, white Democrats in St. Landry Parish, the most populous parish in the state, pushed back against Republican-led reconstruction efforts by joining hate groups like the Knights of the White Camellia, the Innocents, the Seymour Knights, and the Ku Klux Klan. As white vigilante groups inflicted violence against blacks and white Republicans, on September 13, 1868, Republicans held a meeting in Washington, Louisiana, not far from Opelousas, which soon turned into an angry face-off with armed Seymour Knights. A misfired rifle elevated tensions to near riot conditions, only to de-escalate when Bentley agreed to publish an honest accounting of events in the city's leading Republican newspaper, the St. Landry Progress. Instead, Bentley's published testimony of Republican intimidation by white Democrats furthered the wrath of white hate groups, leading to an outbreak of violence on September 28th after rumors of an armed black uprising brought back generational fears of mass slave revolts against white slaveholders. With black lives no longer valued as slaves, on the first night of violence, 29 African-American men were taken to a local prison, leading to the summary execution of 27 men without due process or trial. Unremitting bloodshed continued over the next two weeks, witnessing the deaths of African Americans in their homes or on the streets of Opelousas, including the public murder of C.E. Durand, the white editor-in-chief of the St. Landry Progress. By the time the violence ended, more than 250 people, the vast majority African American, were dead, effectively reversing Reconstruction-era gains for freed blacks in Louisiana. During the city's two weeks of racial homicide, all Republican-leaning newspapers were burned to the ground. And while Republican presidential candidate Ulysses S. Grant handily won the White House that same year, not a single Republican vote was counted in St. Landry Parish, making the Opelousas Massacre of 1868 yet another stain on America's slow embrace of equal rights. And there you have it. The Opelousas Massacre, today on The Daily Dose. If you like learning something new every day, subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.